Folks, I am a tractor attachment dealer, and while we do sell all sorts of tractor attachments, there's certainly a whole bunch that we don't sell, and that's for a variety of reasons. And to give you some insight as to why I don't carry some of these attachments, um, I want to share that with you now and you know, raise awareness that these attachments may be out there and maybe they're not, but uh, also maybe you know of a solution that I should consider as well, and so I'd like your feedback on it. Let's dive right into it. And so the first one that I don't carry, don't advertise, don't talk about, don't put on my website, are gonna be self-powered loader mount snowblowers. And I'm gonna put these into two different categories of self-powered blowers, all right? And um, well, we're gonna use MK Martin as the example for both of them. While I do carry their three-point blowers, which I think are a very good product at a good price point, their loader mount blowers are crazy. And so they have a version that is literally self-powered with its own engine right on there. You can hook it up to your front end loader. They're fairly small. They're maybe four or five foot. They're not very big. Um, and they're hovering right now around 13, 15, 17 grand, depending on the configuration and setup. That is an insane amount of money to have a small snowblower on your front end loader. That's just not something that I think anybody in the right mind should really purchase. And so I don't even bother advertising or talking about it. And you're not going to see it on my website. Now, the other version of self-powered blowers, maybe that's a little bit of a misnomer, are gonna be the kind that the blower mounts on your loader, but then they come with a hydraulic power pack that mounts on your three-point hitch and has a hydraulic pump that runs off of the rear PTO. And so your tractor is technically powering it, but it's, it's feeding that power into a hydraulic power pack, some hoses that run all the way up front to your loader where the snow blower is mounted, and you operate it that way. And if you thought the self-powered with its own little engine blowers were expensive, well, these will knock your socks off because these are over 20 grand, sometimes over 30 grand, depending on the setup that you want. The price is just out of control, and I can't argue that it's not a really cool setup to have, and the convenience of having on your loader, I think, is, is a really nice feature as well, but again, it's just not practical. I don't know who it is practical for. Like an airport, maybe, is <laughs> something that it's practical for, or a municipality, and that's not my target audience, and if somebody did want to reach out, you know, in a specific case like that and request a quote, I'm happy to do it, but otherwise you're not gonna see it around here. Now, something else we don't advertise on the website, we sell a, a handful a year, again, because customers do reach out and request it, but conversion kits. And so what you're staring at right now is a, a pinned on bucket, all right? There's no quick attach system between the front end loader and the bucket here. You have to pull out pins and manually kind of hammer things in and out and then hook up a different attachment. A real pain to deal with. So the SSQA, the JDQA are quick attach conversion systems that are really nice to have. The reason I don't sell them is because I can't get anything that's what I think affordable. You know, I mean, these kits are, for a kit with a conversion plate and some weld on brackets in the back, they typically hover around two grand. Um, you know, that includes shipping and that includes all the parts that you would need, but you still have to weld it on. You still have to do all that kind of stuff yourself. And there's, sometimes some cheaper ones out there from random manufacturers but there's so many variances between the setups on loaders and the pin locations and everything else that it's there's no straightforward one you know the ones that we can get are all essentially custom made for all the different loaders that are out there so it's a low volume thing and so i think that's part of the reason why it costs more too really long lead times and it's one of the reasons that i actually encourage folks you know repeatedly over the years if you're shopping for a tractor don't buy something that's pinned on like this because more often than not, you're not gonna get a, a cheap conversion kit out there unless you're really handy and can do it all yourself. Lawn rollers, you're staring at one right here. And in fact, I used to sell these and I really still like this lawn roller as well. It was hard to find a quality lawn roller company and a lot of folks are on that same page, right? There's some junk ones that you can get uh, at the big box stores and that kind of thing. And, and this one has lasted Oh boy, I don't know, four years now for me and going on. And it's been lent out to friends and that kind of thing too. But it's just a nice piece of equipment that doesn't, it's not sky high. And it's not that I can't find other lawn rollers out there, but I always try to find good values on, on quality and price and features. And the other ones that are out there right now that I can find that are a decent quality are just so darn expensive. So I've got some ideas. I've, I'm, I'm working on something with the manufacturer right now. I don't know if it's gonna pan out or not, and it's gonna be a while before it happens, but we could be back in the lawn roller game. I've got molehills galore from the winter and early spring that I need to flatten out here soon before uh, we get to mowing season and everything else, but you're not gonna see these available for me. I've got a, a video out there. It's got, I don't know, around 100,000 views or so, and 
It still has traction, I still get inquiries because of it, but right now, unfortunately, I don't have a solution for you guys. What you're looking at here is a prototype that we developed, um, I don't know, a while back, two or three years ago. It just never panned out. It's a ballast box uh, with some add-on boxes on the side, so you can really, for bigger machines, you know, you can add on the extra weight. Of course, it had some other things built into it as well. Never really got off the ground, it's just too expensive. This is a completely uh, made in the USA product, all American steel and labor and everything else. And trying to compete against the Chinese uh, cheap stuff out there was just not, I mean, this is gonna be three or four times the amount of money. I just didn't see a market for that on, on folks that would pay that price point. You know, it's, it's actually a better value for us to sell uh, the Versa bracket weight bundles with the bracket and, and the individual weights, the suitcase weights themselves, uh, compared to something like this. I used to endorse some of those Chinese ballast boxes and um, for reasons I covered in another video, I don't anymore. But we may revisit, try to find another solution for a ballast box in the future. You know, always ideas floating around in there, but you gotta kind of prioritize what you think is gonna have um, the most success and the best probability of getting it to market. And right now, this has just kind of been sitting here wasting away and, well, unfortunately not doing a whole lot. And it's not that there's not some other quality ballast boxes out there, but they are, the non-Chinese stuff, more expensive. They don't have extra features on them. They're just a straight weight box without tool holders, receivers, and other little add-ons that I think increase the value and the versatility of the, uh, the bucket or the box itself. And so, because of those increased price points and the lack of additional features, I don't think it's a good value for my customers and therefore I don't offer it as a solution. Cedars, like what you see here, everybody, well not everybody, a lot of people want a cedar. They're super awesome tools and uh, you know, most of these you still have to get the ground worked up, you know, till it up, plow it up, disc it up, all that kind of thing, and then seed it after that. There are no-till drills as well, which are a whole another level of crazy on price, but this right here is a cheap Chinese cedar, very similar actually to the Tar River cedars I used to carry, just some different colors and different looking panels, but a lot of the guts of it look really similar. You know, it came in with some a couple broken parts. We fixed a couple broken parts. Didn't have great reviews, but it was dirt cheap. We got this thing on Amazon. I think they have them at Northern Tool as well, and it was like 2,500 bucks for a five foot cedar. It did the job, it planted some plots for us here and at another property last year. Uh, this Casco one, I've had that. I bought that, I think, five years ago or so. And it's served me well also. Uh, I've reached out to Casco repeatedly. They ignore me. They don't want to uh, do business with me, apparently, which is fine. But um, not that they're cheap, right? They're expensive. Even back, back five years ago, I feel like that little four-foot cedar there was, I don't know, 4,500 bucks or something crazy. And so I'm sure it's way more than that now. But that's the challenge. You get a cheap cedar like this, and they're pretty junky, they're not reliable, the customer service is non-existent, trying to get replacement parts and that kind of thing. Or you jump up to something like a Casco or you know, there's other brands that are out there, they're just all so expensive and hard for the average landowner to justify purchasing and holding on to. If you have a commercial outfit or you do food plots as a business, you can start to justify those more expensive pieces of equipment, but just really impossible to do here. And there's some other manufacturers that I do work with actually where they offer cedars. But again, it's the same thing. It's, it's the price point. It's just not practical. It doesn't relate to you guys uh, for the most part. And so I just don't offer them, at least not right now. Now, speaking of cedars, yeah, you can spread seed with a spreader like this, all right? And we've been carrying the Ag Spray electric spreader for a long time. Really like this thing, adjustable spray pattern on it, quick hitch compatible, you can reach this gate to open and close from the seat. It's lightweight, I mean, look at that. You can move it around easy for transport too. So it's got a lot of good things going on for it, but some folks do want a PTO spreader or cedar spreader. And for the longest time, I couldn't find anything that met all the criteria that I wanted, which one was gonna be quick hitch compatible. So hard to find a quick hitch compatible PTO spreader, I don't know why. Uh, two, I wanted to be able to do all sorts of materials, as many as possible, you know, with sand, salt, uh, fertilizer, seed, of course, all that kind of thing. And I did find a, a few out there, well, not a few, I found one out there that did that, but it was so crazy expensive that nobody would buy it, right? Except for like a random farmer here or there. So trying to find something more compact that was pretty price competitive, had all those features, I finally did it. And we've actually got them on the way soon from Befco. And Befco has been in business for a long time and it's just, it goes to show you that while even somebody who's in the industry all the time, like myself, I, I live in it, right? I, I still, there's still manufacturers out there that have been around forever that I'm just not aware of. And I'm glad 
I was enlightened. They have some high quality stuff. We're not gonna carry all of it. I'll get into those reasons a little bit later, but we're gonna get their PTO spreaders in. We have them, they're literally in transit to us now, so we're gonna be highlighting those soon. I can't wait to show you. Now on that note, as far as salters go, every fall, early winter, you start to get a lot of requests for those. And while we can get them, all right, we can get them from um, you know the HLA, MK Martin partners of ours, there's, again, expensive, right? And I think you're, you're seeing where I'm going with this and that most folks that are reaching out to me, at least my general majority of the customer base needs something that's relatively affordable. I mean, all this stuff's expensive, but you know, you start to get to certain things that are really commercial only and just can't be justified. And I pick and choose, you know, when I think that that's worth highlighting on the channel, but I don't think a salter is the right product. And so also those salters are just a salter, right? You can't do all sorts of other stuff with them. And so I think that limited functionality of the product just hurts the potential sales volume and the, 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 the justification for customers even more. And so that ties back into Befco where they become more versatile. You can use it in every season, right? In the spring, in the summer, in the fall, for all your fertilizing and seeding. You can use it in the winter for sand, for salt, all that kind of stuff. And so it really enhances the versatility of it makes it a year-round tool that you can use and helps justify the cost of that piece of equipment. We are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. So you're looking at one of the most popular pieces of equipment that we sell, which is the Del Marino flail mower. All right, this is a funny top. I mean, we sell hundreds of these things every year. A really, really awesome piece of equipment. The one downside, to this flail mower and almost every flail mower out there is the fact that they are not quick hitch compatible. All right, and, and so that means these, the three point connection there is not gonna fit up to a quick hitch like the Spico that we sell or a, an iMatch or anything else. So the reason for that is that these flail mowers typically shift, side shift, left to right. And so that PTO shaft needs a lot of room to move around. And when you introduce a quick hitch on there with a rigid frame that's not gonna move at all, well, that potentially creates an interference point for that PTO shaft. Now, it's not to say that I can't get you a quick hitch compatible flail mower, but I don't. And the reason is it costs roughly 25% more for a, a similar size and, and capacity flail mower just to have that quick hitch compatibility. It's from a different manufacturer, from Befco, and it's not that they don't make a very nice flail mower because it is very nice, but is having just that one additional feature of significance, you know, being quick hitch compatible, worth paying such a heavy premium of 25% give or take? I I just don't think so. I mean, that's a, we're, you're not talking a hundred bucks or a couple hundred bucks. You're talking thousands of dollars in price difference to have that one feature on there. And for me, you know, unless you guys start to tell me that that's something you really want, you know, we're not gonna be featuring on the channel. We're not gonna have it on the website or anything else. Now there's another product out there that I could get my hands on. And in fact, a while back, I don't know, a year or two ago, whenever the heck it was, I did a survey on it with you guys to see if you were interested in me getting this product in. And yeah, there were some folks that were, but there was also a lot of detractors on there saying how much maintenance it is, how much of a pain in the butt it is. And of course, they're very, very pricey as well. And I'm talking about a sickle bar mower. And so we can get those from a sister company. I think it is a Del Marino called Enrossi. Um, Befco also offers a sickle bar mower. The Enrossi are cheaper than the Befco. Um, but man, none of them are cheap. And you know, just kind of over the years, the general consensus seems to be that they're one of those things that seem like a great idea, but when in practicality, for a lot of the things and a lot of the reasons that folks want to use them for, they just don't work out that well. And on ditches um, or around ponds, that kind of thing, when they do cut the grass down, it just it's just cutting it one spot and folding it over and you have long sections of grass that are that are folded over and laying there and it just doesn't look very good. I mean, sickle bar mowers are really more of a hang tool and that's not what most folks that are watching my channel intend to use it for. And so because of all of the downsides of that and being such an expensive product to begin with, I just don't feel like that's a good fit uh, for you guys out there. And of course, there's gonna be some folks that think it's the best thing on earth and more power to them, but it's not a product that I wanna encourage anybody 
for most purposes to use. HLA Snow Pushers, top three, four products that we sell, incredibly popular for good reason, but HLA makes all sorts of products that we don't carry, all right? And that can be said for a lot of the manufacturers that we work with. I'm very big on, on cherry picking what I, I, I think are the best values, and I do that with every manufacturer I work with. I don't, I don't know, I don't have the, the answer <laughs> as to why not every product from a manufacturer would be the same value in my opinion, but it's just a gut feel. But I'm pretty picky when it comes to things. I like the features, the quality, and the price to all kind of mesh together and create the best value that's out there. And I don't know why it's not straight across the board with most manufacturers, but sometimes they have, you know, they're, they're swinging and they're missing and sometimes they're hitting home runs. And HLA for sure hit a home run here, but some of their other products are not lacking in quality, um, maybe not even lacking in features, but the features that you get with the quality and then the high price point makes it not a good value. And I'm not picking on HLA in general. This is just the, the, the process that I go through with every manufacturer that I work with. And you'll see 20, 30, 40 manufacturers, whatever it is on my website, they'll all have huge, typically all have huge catalogs of products that they carry and would love me to feature. But I think that a different brand has a better rotary cutter or the better flail mower or a better set of pallet forks or, or whatever it is. And so I just cherry pick what I think is the best value for you with all the important criteria in mind. Now, last but not least, you have brands that are OEM brands, right? Like Frontier, you're staring at a couple pieces here. Lamb Pride, uh, even Woods really is only sold by, typically by Kubota dealers. And that's not a brand that I can work with, right? Those are very specific. Those are those are tied into the tractor manufacturer, like John Deere or like Kubota. And so you're not gonna see me, I used to sell those um, when I would get them in used. Like that's how I acquired both of these, is these came in as part of used tractor packages that I bought. And so I would sometimes cherry pick what I wanted to keep for myself uh, back in the day. And that's how I came to acquire this stuff. In fact, when we moved not that long ago, these were sitting in the back of the property. They've been sitting back there for years and uh, we had to get them out of there. And so I brought them over here. So I'm gonna wind up getting rid of these. So, you know, I get folks that ask if I can sell them a Lampride rotary cutter or a, a Frontier tiller or whatever the heck it is, and I can't, right? I don't have access to that. That's that's not something that I carry. And honestly, Frontier does not manufacture equipment. They have other brands, uh, other some of the companies that I that I represent myself actually kind of private label equipment for Frontier. Uh, and you'll see on different tillers and different products that they have. Um, sometimes you see Machio on the tillers, for example. They have um, still the OEM data plate that's on there, and then they'll just brand it Frontier, whatever it is. And you are typically paying more because of that. Land Pride does build their own equipment. Woods does, does build their own equipment as well. Um, but a lot of the other manufacturers out there that are not tied into you know, John Deere or Kubota are building high quality equipment, typically at a more affordable price, uh, available at a wide range of dealers, not just those specific dealerships that are uh, branded as accordingly. And that's the reason why, folks. So there you have it. That's gonna do it for us today. Wanted to give you some backstory there as to why you don't see certain things on my channel. And it's not all inclusive. There's still holes that I'm looking to fill here and there. And if the right product and the right opportunity comes along, I'll certainly uh, go for it. But you know, those, I'm starting to fill all those gaps. You know, I'm, I'm doing a pretty good job. I don't have them all filled and, and times change. You know, we talk about that. Manufacturers change. Um, I find better values. So I'll switch a manufacturer at certain times where they come up with a new product or a different product, whatever it is, right? So the kind of the, the evolution of all these products and the evolution of the business just continues to grow. And that's a good thing. Now that said, we sell all sorts of tractor attachments and we ship them all over the country every day of the week. So go to goodworkstractors.com. We include free shipping to 36 states, rewards and financing too. And if you enjoyed today's video, we do all sorts of videos out here. A lot of projects, talking videos like this, a little bit more of kind of like the business side and how the business works. Just to mix it up a variety of stuff. We'd love to have you tag along, hit subscribe down below. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.